Mark, it's good to see you again. And, and my first question is, are there cardboard shortages developing out there? Good afternoon, Kelly, and thanks for having me on. It's good to see you again as well. Uh, there's not cardboard shortages, but the supply chain is very stretched right now. Uh, we've learned how to do things differently during the pandemic. Some segments got really strong at the expense of others. Those are different types of packages, different types of capital installed machines. Uh, our employees showed up every day and continue to do so, and we're meeting customer needs, but it is a stressed and tight supply chain. What is the cardboard box indicator telling us about the U.S. economy right now? I think the economy's gaining steam. Um, the e-commerce section, just as an example, really, really grew last year, more than 50 percent for us over 2019. Uh, in April of this year, uh, so against last year's April, which was the first big pandemic month, we're up uh, over 25 percent. Some of that came at the expense of traditional channels like food to restaurants and things of that nature. But we're beginning to see strength in all of our segments. Uh, even the ones that uh, were hurt last year when businesses were closed without any real let up in e-commerce. Uh, what's pricing like and are you having any trouble either with supply shortages or worker shortages? So on the pricing side, on our inputs, it's, it's wood fiber and recovered fiber. Uh, there has been some upward movement in that. Energy and some of the chemicals that we use, uh, petroleum derivatives for adhesives and things of that nature, have, have gone up. Labor is difficult. Um, we have um, the ability to add shifts. Not all of our plants run 24-7 in the box business. Uh, hiring people has been a challenge, getting them trained um, and getting them, to, getting them to stay. So we've been making up some of the capacity shortages with asking our employees to work some extra overtime. We've been managing it so far, but labor is tight right now. And how are vaccinations playing into that? Are they required? Are you offering incentives for workers to get them? Is it not a factor? We're not, no, we're not requiring vaccinations, but we're highly encouraging it and making it as easy as possible. Many of our plants have become vaccination centers in the different locations that, that they uh, occupy. And even at our, at our Memphis headquarters, we partnered with local hospitals uh, to put vaccination events together for our employees and their families. Wow. Uh, it's fascinating because, again, these are uh, pretty big places <laughs> that can manage that kind of flow. It would make a lot of sense. I, the last question before you go, Mark, is about recycling because with this surge in e-commerce, our living rooms are overflowing with Amazon boxes. And, you know, we put a box ours up and we flatten them all the time. We put them out to the curb. And, but you keep hearing that not all of this cardboard really is recycled, that a lot of it ends up in landfills. Can you speak to whether that's true and if there's anything better that we or the companies can do to cut down on waste? Well, there's a couple of things we're doing. First of all, um, our products are made with renewable natural resources at the beginning of life, wood fiber, and corrugated boxes are recycled at about a 92 percent rate. Wow. The e-commerce piece, the big, the big opportunity there is to take the amount of packaging down. So, for example, International Paper developed a proprietary system called eBoss, an e-commerce box optimization system where we have proprietary algorithms. We work with our customers. Walmart's a great example. And we look at everything they ship. We analyze the data and we recommend a suite of boxes that takes their total amount of packaging down. Hmm. Across our customer base, we've reduced um, empty volume by 14%. Shipping their products is 10 times more expensive than the box, so that's a real value-added service that we provide our customers. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.